good afternoon folks or hello the bringing you new updates there wasn't much to talk about uh, lately oh, like greatly um, so the so we uh, we are now on uh, eighteen thousand and a half, eighteen and a half thousand miles, um, which you know, without any issues, the batteries are over, I think, hundred percent uh, state of health, as far as reported by the uh, Leaf Spy Plus. Uh, Pro, whatever it's called. Um, it's a really strange app. So next week. Me and my fiance, we're actually moving to Tunbridge. I suppose uh, I will cease to be the, the, the urban leaf owner who has to rely on public charging, um, and uh, I will get my own home charger. So I think that's going to be an interesting uh, trans transition. I'm just afraid it's going to be a rather boring one because you know well, I was ch hunting for a charger in the um, in the urban environment. It's sometimes very exciting, given the limited amount uh, of chargers in, in certain areas. There's virtually no chargers actually in the in Tunbridge area. So if anyone lives in that area and uh, owns an EV or is interested in, in getting one, please write to your local. Uh, Representatives, uh, um, I think I think it's the council that's responsible uh, in Tunbridge because uh, you know Kent for a for a garden of, of England is rather poor on the uh, on the whole uh, uh, EV charging infrastructure front, which is very poor basically. It's, um, I think that should be the way you know. Uh, Up at some point. So yeah, we will get our own home charger. I haven't decided which one yet. Um, for the moment, of you know, just a tip: if you live in a, in a block of flats, get yourself. Even if you have a, if you have a parking space that's very close to the building, I got myself an extension cable, a reinforced extension cable that's certified actually to. To be used outside, you know, do not skip these things unless you uh, unless you're planning to, to get a to get a little uh, a fire. Um, and uh, I'm just dropping that cable from the second floor all the way to the to the ground floor. You know, just from the from our bedroom window. The car can be parked downstairs directly underneath it. Uh, that is then plugged into the uh, the, uh, the slow charger, which then in turn is plugged into the car. Uh, of course, you know you have to leave your window open for the night, um, so it's not possible every day. But it actually worked pretty well. You know, leave the car charging slowly overnight. Most of the times it charges to 100% overnight because you know, I rarely get home with less than say 40%. 30%. Um, our local garage, Nissan Ancaster, um, because of some people complaining about it quite uh, massively and because of one of the uh, salespeople misbehaving, should I say, uh, has decided to actually either extend the opening hours or let people use their uh, rapid charger uh, when there is somebody in the building still, but the salespeople is kind of you know, going home. Uh, which is very useful because many people go back or drive back after six o'clock and the garage is closed at six, so it would be useful to have that, wouldn't it? Um, so that's that. Like I said, it's Tunbridge. Tunbridge is in the uh, in West Mulling and Tunbridge area. Do not, you know, uh, uh, 
Let's take that with Tunbridge Wales, which does have some public charging infrastructure. Uh, I think there's two chargers in the, uh, in the public car parks. I, yeah, I've used one of them and it works. They do actually have a leaf there plugged in. Uh, some sort of a ride sharing scheme type of thing. Which is really odd because um, you have a public charging point. That, you know, it's supposed to be the destination charger when you arrive somewhere and you and you uh, you want to plug in. But it's you know, 24 hour. Well, it is available 20, uh, 24 seven. I'm sorry, I'm driving, so it's very hard to, to tell sometimes. Um, however, that charging point is occupied, or one of those is occupied, you know, 24 seven again by a, a car that can be picked up by other people. It's a leaf. Um, I don't, I don't understand that logic. But you know, the, then, then again, that car has to be plugged in somewhere, so because it's a fully electric car. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited to um, to find out, you know, how different is the uh, is going to be our lifestyle, uh, uh, moving to, uh, to 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 having our own charger. Um, I had a, I had a rather old experience recently. Um, the, my current uh, engagement takes me to Leatherhead in, in England, which is about 20, 30 mile drive each way. And actually, uh, I might actually talk about that uh, right now. So, in, in terms of the, in terms of driving, I have a couple of choices in terms of the uh, the, the, the route I can take. And I have to say, choosing between 35 mile drive and 19 or 18 mile drive. Yeah, you would think that the 35 mile drive, my drive is going to be 35 mile drive. Sorry, it's going to be taking longer, but it actually it's a bit of a detour because you're joining M25 and then you're on the motorway, which is obviously usually faster. Uh, occasionally you would get some gridlocks, you know, accidents and whatnot, standards and sort of thing. Um, and I've done that for a bit. But one thing I've noticed that is that I was able to to do sort of a, a three journeys. So you know, go go to work one day, and then back, and then to work the next day, and then I would have to go and charge. There's a there is a rapid charger in Rygate, which is decently priced, and I've actually sent an email to um, to their uh, council praising them for for that. And I got a funny response saying, finally somebody saying something else. Then it is too expensive. Folks, rapid chargers are, are going to be expensive. You're not going to be paying the same amount of money you pay at home. Deal with it. That's just the nature of the uh, the business. Um, the way the way um, uh, you know uh, business rates are constructed, and because you're drawing so much power, it is going to be expensive. Never mind the hardware, because obviously you'd kind of hope that the hardware is paid for at the moment by some sort of a, a grant. But maintenance of the hardware and the actual power demand of it, that is going to cost loads of money. If you if you want the service, do not expect government to pay for everything. That's going to be my advice. Um, you know, if you drive a car just because it's cheaper, charge at home, drive around the town and just don't moan. Because that's your choice. Um, when somebody charging is charging, you know, two and a half pounds, three pounds uh, for connection, and less than 20p per kilowatt hour, that is a reasonably charged rapid charger. Um, so, but going back to my disc, to my early uh, track of uh, is the you know the, I've soon discovered that this is unsustainable, you, you know. Um, doing three three drives a day and then virtually depleting my battery obviously I can't really just go down to zero because I can't charge at home um, and so so I, I just saw some alternatives and the uh, one of the things that I've tried is turning off the uh, the aircon completely uh, you know it's we're in the in a, in a warm times now in the UK the relatively it's it's 16 degrees at the moment but you know it's it was up to uh, 
30 at some point, or 20, I can't remember the actual figures, but it was quite warm. Um, obviously you don't, you don't need a, you don't need to, uh, to warm up the car. The aircon, you know, is useful, but again you can just open a window and blast some air. Um, so that, that saves me a bit of, of, of battery. It's obviously not possible during winter times. Um, I don't recommend driving in a in a uh, in a coat, you know, in a hat. It's not comfortable, and it's not really safe. You know, um, you are driving a, a nearly two-ton machine, and uh, it's capable of making a lot of damage. And you, you know, I'm sorry, but you have to be comfortable as a driver. Um, and so um, I, I, I sort of, you know, that, that was a bit, I, th I can't remember how much extra range that gave me, but I wasn't satisfied with it. So I started looking into different different routes and I found that actually I don't have to actually take the motorway. You know, technically uh, it's 10, 15 minutes uh, more time on the road, but because I don't have to spend that time so often charging, in the long run, I actually save quite a lot of time, um, and uh, and thirdly, you know, just driving in a relaxed manner. Uh, I don't know if you can see behind me, but uh, especially in this in the city, people just tend to drive, uh, just trying to push you basically on. It's just a, it's not really nice, but never mind that. It's just uh, it's just not very not very. Uh, not even eco-friendly, but it's not very. Uh, 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 it's, 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 it's a very expensive way to drive a car. Uh, you know, you're just pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling. Um, the, um, the, the the way I always kind of describe it to people is, you know, you never mind the average speed, but if you if you had to plot a graph that uh, has your acceleration and then deceleration, the longer that curve In is, yards, the more speed energy you use. Um, so you know, if you can minimise the uh, the ups and downs and sort of s smooth out the curve, better are your chances of, of, of achieving a greater range. But even even more importantly, just a relaxed drive. You know, yes, you do have to sometimes push it for safety reasons. Like you, you know, when you're joining traffic, you just you, you don't want to slow down very slowly or, or sorry, accelerate very slowly. You do want to um, you do want to uh, uh, do it you know, promptly so that people don't uh, don't have to slow down in front of you uh, because you've taken 10 minutes to join the tr the, the traffic. Um, but just be mindful of other people and just don't sit on anyone's tail. You know, um, I don't know. Um, it's almost like like people just can't make up their their own mind. They can't just. Decide. Okay, I'm just going to stick to. You know, I'm not going to go above 30, say, miles an hour. Um, and you know, we're all adults. I hope. And uh, as an adult, I don't want to follow somebody else uh, and just skip to the next person, to the next person, to the person, and follow them again. Skip to the next person. That's just that's what children do. Uh, in my mind, you know, so I have another one on, on my tail. And, what I tend to do when I when I get somebody on my tail is just slow down, sometimes to a crawling speed, and you know, if you have a problem with that, just don't follow my tail. If I can't see a wrench in my back view, rear view mirror, you're way too close to me. Um, I'm not going to accelerate just because you're sitting on my tail. I'm, I'm sorry, that's just not not the way this works. Um, so just don't you know, just ignore people people like that, and just don't don't be one of them. Um, because you're, you're just going to lose a lot of range if you drive like that. Um, and you know, never mind the range. Like I say, it's just it just makes it for such a smoother and nicer uh, drive. You just I can just relax and you know I don't I I'm going to get there anyway. You know I'm moving. Um, it's uh, we, we all share the roads. It's you know some people are slower, some people are faster. The uh, you know the, the the car has an ability to go fast for safety reasons mainly so you can actually join the traffic overtake you know promptly and and uh, and safely but not not uh, 
you don't have to be a race driver all the time. So that's just. Um, and I've done race driving when I was young, and I, I can certainly do that. And I can smoke some tyres and scare some people off, but that's just not. You can't commute that way. It's just. I'm sorry, but that's just. Uh, I'm. I'm. Well, I'm. Sh I'm sure everybody would arrive in the office agitated and angry at everybody. And you know, what's, what's the point of starting a day on the uh, on the off? Um, anyway, so yeah, 18,000 miles, still pretty good. I had some, you know, minor incidents, but nothing to do with the car itself. The, uh, the, the, the it seems that the, the, there's an issue with the tyre on 30 kilowatt hour leaf, um, which is the same issue people have reported with 24 hour, uh, uh, 24 kilowatt hour leaves where the, uh, the, the driver's side, the rear tyre uh, just you know, deflates sometimes and it seems to be picking up loads of nails and and all sorts of other things um, it's really odd um, so eventually I just, I just, I just decided to um, to take the bullet and um, and I, uh, I bought for about tenner I bought the, uh, thank you uh, I bought uh, tyre insurance. Uh, can I do? Um, you know, well, I'm not going to spend 90, 100 quid every month or every two months on new tyres. It's just not uh, not going to happen. Um, it's happened a few times already, and uh, and uh, the tyre insurance is, is just basically the way to go uh, with these things. Yeah, that's the other thing when you see when you see the lights just coast you know well when you see the cars in front of you stuck in traffic coast um i i i can't really find the time at the moment but i uh, because i'm you know i'm because of my engineering background i can i can i can, I can produce a video describing the, the the sort of principles of of efficient driving and generally why why some of the the the, the, the um why electric cars are actually you know far superior when it comes to uh, to some of these things and, and far more reliable and simpler in in, in construction. Um, and just don't stop aiming. Nobody said anything about it yet, but I'm sure somebody will. So, just uh, c concluding my my little rant. If you um, if you live in in Tunbridge Wales or Tunbridge area, or sort of generally. Sort of west side of Kent, you know. Please um, get in touch. Uh, I'd love to meet you, and um, and you know, maybe we can organise an e an EV event somewhere in that area. I uh, following the the, the, the the fellow YouTuber. I don't know his first name actually. Um, the guy from Yorkshire who rants quite a lot about, uh, about driving in general. Um, I think following his example I will contact my local MP and, and council um, and trying to get in you know trying to get some influence in, uh, in, in that area because it's a shame um, it's a shame that uh, Sainsbury's for instance did not decide to, uh, to install any, any drivers that there are. I've driven a lot around the area quite a lot of times, and and because we were, when we were looking for a house, it obviously takes a while. And there's quite a few EV owners in the area, and it's a shame that the the council does not notice it. Obviously, when you live in the area, you don't care for the for the for the charges. But I think even though you're you might you're a, you know you have your own charger at home, you should still uh, spread the words. You know, let people know that. Uh, there is a need for these things. Um, there's absolutely a need for uh, for, for charging uh, infrastructure. Uh, the um, sort of the, you know, if, I'll give you an example. If you live in Kent and you want to commute somewhere to like uh, like Dover, uh, you have to dip out to the um, to the elect electricity uh, rapid chargers on the on the on the motorway or. Is it, is it a road? I don't know. Um, 
just to just to top up it's you know it's impossible to do a, a round trip from Tunbridge or Tunbridge Wales all the way to the to the edge of the uh, the island and then back without uh, recharging even on a in a 30 kilowatt hour uh, uh, um, leaf and if you tell me that it's a t you need a Tesla I'm sorry but that's not an excuse um, that's what the rub what the destination charging is for and if your council is not installing any and if you own an EV and you know that there isn't any charging infrastructure in your area do something about it you know it's uh, these things are up to us don't expect anybody to pick up the slack the um, you might move you might uh, somewhere further away and you might want to uh, do the uh, you might need to use the the, the charges yourself um, thanks for just stopping in the middle and you know begging for attention um, it's just the way. And now he's turning. Um, sometimes being nice on the road does not pay off. Pay off. Um, you shouldn't stop me from being nice, right? Yeah, do something about it, please. Um, you know, just ranting on the internet. Again, not a great idea. There was a there was an initiative on Facebook recently where a guy. Um, using freedom of information sort of a thing, I don't know what it's called in the UK, I can't remember, might be, might be called that. He wrote to, um, to all the regions in the UK, you know, just asking a few questions about the, uh, the charging infrastructure and what is, what is there, has, in, has there been any development, whether they're protecting the actual uh, charging spaces because that's another problem. Often the, these, these spaces get iced, despite being um, clearly mar uh, marked as, as, as charging spaces. I have a guy who um, who's a complete tit, tit in the uh, in the in the Beckenham area, who just parked in the in, in, a, in an EV, a pure EV, not even a PHEV, just parked in the uh, in the charging spots because you know nobody gave him a ticket. He decided to call me a W, uh, you know, at, once, at some point. I've reported that to the, uh, the council. No joy. You know, can I, what can I do um, other than, than report it to somebody else if uh, the council doesn't do anything about it? Who am I supposed, you know, like, what are you supposed to do as a, as a driver? Um, if I turn up at the, uh, at the, at the par uh, car park and and the, uh, there's a car, uh, you know, uh, parked in the, uh, in the spot and not even charging. That's just that's just a disgrace. Um, especially if it's an EV, they should know better. The um, yeah, so you know, it was it's really it's really um, nice to see loads of councils responding to his letters. Um, um, West Mowing and, uh, and Tunbridge, no response. They absolutely don't care about uh, EV charging. Um, well, I'm not going to make any political statements here, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it is certain party in certain areas that does that, and it's just a shame. Um, Yeah, the only thing we can do is, if you know some of these people, just give them a right, you know, um, just expose them to, to, to it. Um, if you have any misconceptions yourself, you know, then please don't, because, you know, it doesn't make any sense for, uh, uh, yeah, I just, uh, that's, a, that's a subject for another rant, and I've been, I've been on about stuff for, uh, for long enough now, I think I'll, uh, I'll stop soon. Yeah, the uh, leaves are really nice. Uh, oh, well, since this is an unstructured run, new leaf uh, supposed to be announced in September. We're obviously awaiting the uh, Model 3 for an, uh, last announcement or last reveal next month. Pretty soon, it's going to be exciting. Uh, we do know loads of things about it for once. It's not going to be in a, a half-hour car like uh, 
absolutely. You know, the, 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 the current leaves, even 30 kilowatt hour leaves, are very much half hour cars. You know, um, the, 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 the looks of it, a lot of the, the sort of platform has been mildly upgraded, but not to the level you would expect. Uh, even their own leaves. You know, it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a huge um, organizations. They do have a lot of R and D, and loads of things go into their cars. And if you get a you know any other uh, brand, uh, not brand, um, any other model, you're gonna go, you're gonna get so much better experience. You know, the cameras are better. The um, the, the whole entertainment system is better. There's loads of improvements in these cars. They've done very little in the leaf. Um, 30 kilowatt hour leaves obviously much better than the, uh, the 24 hour kilowatt hour uh, leaves, but the uh, but they could have done so much better. Um, we'll see what the uh, the 30 kilowatt hour leaf does have. Or oh, sorry, not 30 kilowatt hour. The uh, the 2016, 7, 70 or 18, whichever year it comes in. Um, leaf will we'll see what it will have. I hope it's not going to have a 40 kilowatt hour battery because it's. Frankly, that's not not enough, not good enough. If it's a 40 kilowatt hour battery and 64 uh, kilowatt hour battery, like uh, like James has predicted, um, then uh, you know uh, that's awesome. Um, not everybody needs 60 kilowatt hour battery, but I think uh, I think you know I think that's the point where where you can no longer say, oh, this car needs you know uh, needs to needs to be recharging. Very often, uh, naysayers will obviously always find a find a reason to to discard it. It is a, it is a, it is a peculiar human nature that we we often hold beliefs or or, uh, or I do uh, anyway. Um, and then we try to, we, we we do everything to to confirm. That you know our current set of beliefs is the uh, the bestest and the currentest, um, and we don't have to change. But the uh, there is a great joy in in actually finding new things and playing de 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 you know devil's advocate with yourself. I find great pleasure in in doing that and and talking to people who have other. Um, other set of experiences and beliefs, or um, or or just you know experiences in their life, um, and I do always try to play de de devil's advocate with them because that's the best way to find out um, to, to sort of the root the root of, of their uh, or the cause of their uh, of their particular um, belief or. Choice, um, and you know, driving an EV at the moment is a choice. Well, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't dare to say that you should force anyone to do it. But I think people still have a misconception about EVs that um, has its roots in, in you know, in early or late '90s and early 2000s, where when the leaves were um, forced upon people sometimes, or not leaves, sorry, electric cars, EVs, and they had a really, really terrible range. Um, like, I would never in my life decide to buy Mitsubishi Aimee as, a, as my primary driver, even though, you know, I, I lived in London, where I wouldn't do too many miles anyway, but it's, it's just not a practical car. I don't think it even has a, uh, a rapid charging capability. Which is just you know a bit odd. If you live in a rural area, and but that's my own. That's again, that's my own. Uh, uh, um, that's my my own reasoning. If you obviously live in a rural area and you do 20, 30 miles a day, uh, and you always plug in, then you're fine. But it's just such a strange, strange car to build and sell. Um, you can get them pretty cheap nowadays, actually. If you, if you just, you know, somebody wants to dip in, dip the, the, yeah. So the other excuses that I, I hear quite a lot is the, well, I can't have a, have an EV because we're doing, you know, once a month or once a week we drive to X and Y, 
and and I'm not you know I'm not going to buy a second car just for that. Well, driving around England, I see people owning you know sometimes five six cars per household. Uh, why not just get one EV? Why not share the cars? Um, don't understand that either. Uh, we, we you know so even though we're moving to an area that actually doesn't have uh, good charging infrastructure I think we've made a commitment my lady will have to confirm but I think we've, we've pretty much made a commitment to um, to stick to EVs, to pure EVs uh, the, because my fiance will have to be driving when I'm away if I drive this car during a day um, we're actually thinking about getting a, a, a used Zoe. She, Zoe is slightly smaller, and I think she's more comfortable with with Zoe. For some reason, she um, she uh, she she describes Leave as a big car. You know, I I used to drive a, a Vauxhall uh, Insignia. That was a big car. The uh, Leaf is about half the size. Um, it's so much more pleasure to drive actually, and it's faster. Than Leaf than, than Three liter diesel insignia, but that's a, that's a different thing altogether. Um, yeah, so you know you can you can get a you can get a used uh, Leaf or a, or a, or a Zoe for five six grand at the moment. Um, granted, it might not have the best battery in the world. Um, it might not have the, uh, the, the the biggest range, but if you just need a car for uh, for little trips around the town. Just such such a nicer car to drive. Um, I um, you know I, I am I wouldn't call myself a tree hugger, but I I, uh, I I'm vegetarian, I'm vegan. You know I, I do I do these things for various reasons. You know health and and uh, uh, and just general footprint, my CO two footprint are very very much big reasons for it. Um, but one thing that I've learned is that I, I wouldn't I wouldn't try selling the, uh, the, the the EVs as an eco cars um, to people. Just like the uh, Elon Musk said, you know, it's just a car for uh, for people. I think the biggest obstacle is actually the fact that it's it requires us to change so many things in our life. You know, the fact that you have to plug it in. You can't just uh, turn up at the pumps and, and fill it up. Um, I think that's the biggest obstacle. People are just afraid of new things. It's a natural. It's not. No, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not, but don't make me sound like uh, like I've said something. You know, I've accused everybody of being horrible. Uh, it's not that. It's just the. Um, we, we're just afraid of, of 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 different things, and people do like collaboration, and they, they do like copying others. So. They do like to be exposed to different things by others. So if you own a VV, an EV, just take your friends for a ride. Just, you know, talk to them. Don't laugh at them. Don't say, oh, mine's better because it's electric. It's just, you know, it's just not, not going to work. Just just give them a ride. Give them, show them around. Show them that there's nothing wrong with uh, with plugging things in. And, uh, and just enjoy your car. Um, I'm, uh, I'm approaching Croydon, so that's going to be my final stop on this journey. I'll uh, I'll give you an update when we when we get the uh, the charger installed. So maybe even, even before that. I'll uh, I'm, you know I'm I'm leaning towards Podpoint just because of the pricing scheme. Uh, I I do know that you can get a charger cheaper on eBay and then install it yourself or get a electrician to do it and, uh, and so on and so forth but I do actually want I do want seven kilowatt hour charger I don't see any point having a charging point at my house um, that isn't seven kilowatt hour charger or capable of, of, of charging at 70 kilo, seven kilowatt hour um, the even if you do, if your car doesn't have such a capability it's just uh, it's just you know it's just future proofing your charging the, I, I, the, I got a car with 6.6, .6, uh, it's called by, uh, by Nissan, 
charging and it's just it was you know it was a uh, wasn't, wasn't even a, cho a choice I'm actually surprised I'm making a, jo a choice because now this car uh, needs this sort of a charging capability so basically it means I can plug it in at work especially if you have to pay for the time like you have to do with South London nowadays you just plug it in for an hour or two and uh, you get, you know, you get half the battery topped up. Why wouldn't you want to do it? Um, same at home, you can just go back, go back home and um, after work, say, and plug it in, have your dinner. Um, and by the time you're done, you know, an, an hour or so later, you, you can go around and have a drive around the town. Even if your commute takes you around for uh, and depletes the battery pretty much to the full, um, you know it's a bit silly in my opinion not to get one. But again, you know people have reasoning or reasons, their own reasons, and I respect that. But at the same time, I uh, I just don't agree. Respectfully disagree. So yeah, pot points. Um, I don't know, I kind of like their looks as well. I will probably get untethered charger, even though that means I'm going to have to spend some money on a, on a cable. But we, we're going to have a Zoe and Leaf. That obviously means two different uh, cables to charge, charge it with. Um, we are still debating whether we should get Eco 7 or Economy 7 a tariff. Uh, because that boosts up the price of the day tariff. So uh, I think we're going to get a smart meter just to see where, where this is going to take us. Somebody's got a very squeaky gearbox. Um, if you have any recommendations in terms of charging, you know, any any stories to share, uh, please let me know. I do. I am aware of some of the flaws of the early pot points, such as you know, soldering the capacitors and the other way around, electric mm -hmm. capacitors, which is just mind-boggling if you ask me. Uh, but you know, these things happened. I'm gonna have to change the lane here. Same with same with, with coasting um, in slow traffic. You don't have to do much to just uh, to just you know tread along without having to do this nervous you know up and down, up and down, up and down as I see other people doing. Um, I know. I mean, yeah. Not going to go into that in there. This is a, a long enough rant already as it is. I'll speak to you later.